Welcome everybody to the Frederick Symphony Orchestra's live stream series. We're back after a two week break and it's great to be back for our return episode, Christmas in Summer. My name is Glenn Quater and I'm the music director and conductor and I'm joined by several of my great, great friends here. My associate conductor and great friend, Andy Rosenfeld. Our admin and moderator and co-principal lobo of the orchestra, Bob Renshaw. And our principal trumpet player and sweet, sweet jazz player as well, Gerald cool. Jones. Welcome, guys. How y'all doing tonight? I'm Gerald. Great to see you. Yeah. It's great to be back. It was nice. It was good to have a couple weeks off, but it's it was nice. nice. To do that. Yeah, it was yeah. nice. So what has everybody been up to? Uh, Andy, you and I have been talking quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I know you're still kind of uh, working on your, your college things and the courses and the online prep yep. and all of that. Yeah, that's uh, just uh, just between getting ready to teach some courses uh, courses later in the summer, and really just trying to f get things squared away to see what's going to happen in the fall. Trying to trying to uh, plan for return of students right. in 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 uh, in the fall. They're going to be back in some one way or the other, half online and half in person. I think. So exactly. Be, yeah, it's kind of unknown still, but. We're all in the no, same boat, shifting, right? A shifting landscape, yeah. Shifting landscape, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now, um, before we move on to Bob and to Gerald, I want to just say, obviously, everybody, if you're watching, you're watching us on YouTube tonight, and this is something new for us. We are um, in the process right now of, of being able to broadcast on both Facebook and YouTube. Um, this week, however, was it wasn't possible, so we're trying YouTube for the first time by itself to see how it goes, and. Uh, Everything that I've seen so far looks good. I've gotten good reports that the video quality and the audio quality is good. So we'll uh, we'll do it this way this week, and then stay tuned for how we finally get to both platforms. So Bob, this is a different chat feature for us. I noticed, um, and we just got you logged in moments ago. Yeah, so. we did. <laughs> and but it's up and it's running, and so you know. We're ready to chat with everybody who's watching and, you know, questions, 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 people ask us your questions. We really want um, to uh, engage with our audience. So, uh, you know, ask me questions and I'll pass them on to to everyone on the screen. That would be great. And we yeah, we're trying to really get people really uh, plugged into a little more dialogue with people like us and anybody that we bring on as a guest. And we'll also have um, our concert master, Alyssa Boxhill, joining us later tonight as well. So uh, it's always great to have everybody here. So Bob, um, I, I understand you got a very nice new microphone and it really does sound fantastic. I did. And and actually, while it's great that it's, it's enhancing this as well, that's for a little project that our principal flute or Paul Lella Birchill and I are working on. We want to try to come up with um, something to keep the Spotlight series going called Spotlight at Home. Oh, cool. And we're going to try to do some split screen videos that we can post up on the on the Facebook page and things like that. Nice. Um, you know, we're going to do an experiment with just Paul Lella and I first so I can get used to the software. And then hopefully we'll get that to bigger and bigger chamber ensembles where we'll all record separately at our own homes and then compile the videos together nice. into an actual chamber performance. Fantastic. Well, I know it can be done. Yeah. I can tell you personally, it can yeah, be done. It can Absolutely. Be done. And it's a shame too. I know we had several performances lined up. You all did as well with the spotlight series and we were right at the, the uh, finish line with rehearsing so many things. And unfortunately we didn't, we couldn't make it happen. So yeah, I know yeah. Our, we had a really fun program set with uh, some nonets on it. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to be savvy enough with this software to get up to nine players, but <laughs> you know, hopefully we can get some quartets, trios, uh, quintets, things like that on there. Well, we're definitely looking forward to it. And I know the players are too. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about what we, what we're trying to do in terms of uh, relaunch of the season coming up for the, the stuff, fall. Yeah. And we certainly have a lot of great ideas. We've got a lot of great solutions. So we're not going to be leaving the audience with no music for sure. It's right. going to be a, just a little modified. So, <clears throat> well, Bob, thanks so much again for coming on. And um, again, keep those questions coming to Bob. Um, anything about some of the music that we're playing, um, you know, about some of the artists that we've had on. And actually, one thing I wanted to request that people write in is what were your favorite holiday or Christmas songs growing up 
what was it that you listened to in your household and what's dear to your heart? I know there are a lot of them. They, they eventually, I think, they find our way onto our programs, if I'm correct. We talk about it a lot, and we're always looking for new music for the holidays, and we've been able to upgrade our holiday um, concert selections the last few years. We've bought a lot of new arrangements and new renditions, and we've got several of those tonight. So it's some very exciting things, a lot of nice crossover stuff into the kind of the, the jazz, early jazz swing era and that, that flavor. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn to my next, my lead trumpet man, yeah. Mr. Gerald Jones. Gerald, how are you doing, my friend? Doing well, doing well. Just trying to keep the chops in, in order. Right. And uh, actually enjoying the time off. Yeah, I've been able to clean up a little around the house and finding <laughs> a lot of old programs from concerts oh, great. from the past and uh, putting together all of the old uh, CDs and DVDs that I've amassed over the years from Frederick Symphony. So that's actually yeah. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, we have a lot of great footage and a lot of great recordings, and you're on probably all of them too. Just so now, about. Gerald, these these one of the songs that we're going to play in this first segment, um, it's an incredible rendition of the Mel Torme classic "Chestnuts on an Open Fire," the Christmas song, yes. and it has this beautiful, just real easy solo in the middle. And I remember when we rehearsed it, easy you know, sounding, easy easy going, right? <laughs> and yeah. uh, so we get there and you have your your music in front of you and you know we we play it the first time we play the notes and then we go back and i say all right gerald now make it yours just do what you want with it and that's what i love about working with you i'm like okay you know you know what to do just take this thing and make it better please (laughs) because it's usually pretty square when we get it on the chart right and that's fine it's just it's a lead sheet of course but (laughs) You really did some wonderful things in that piece. And and I, I think I call on you for that all the time. Well, the interesting part about that is it, it's actually a scary thing. It may <laughs> not look like it. Uh, you know, on the surface, I look like that smooth duck floating on the pond. But underneath, I'm kicking like a madman. Uh, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where improv is a very challenging art form. And certainly in the moment, you don't really know what you're going to do. Right. And, and I found that the best solos come when I really don't know what's getting ready to happen. And I just sort of let it transpire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, wonder... So in these moments, I don't even remember what I did. But, right. you know, see, you go back and go back, go and, back and listen to your own solo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I know that I, I have a tendency and uh, I've got a lot of friends that, I, that we perform with and in other groups, too. And a lot of times, a lot of that those ideas come to me right like maybe the day before the show or mm-hmm. production week, I'll say, you know what, that one section, why don't we extend it here and why don't you go ahead and take two choruses? And Because as you play it, you you realize it's missing something here and maybe we can just stretch a little bit and, and open up yeah. the solo section and all of that. And I appreciate your flexibility because I know they throw, I throw that at you quite a bit. But um, Well, that's, that's part of the challenge and it's what <laughs> I really enjoyed in working with you is that uh, in each of these cases, it, it has challenged me to grow as a musician because it goes beyond, as you said, what's on the sheet. Right, right. But yeah. it, it makes you really kind of use your brain, listen to some of the changes. I remember we were talking about two, five, one changes mm-hmm. one time yeah. oh, gosh. in one of the rehearsals. And, and it really does uh, challenge you, but then at the same time, you have to sort of relax and let it uh, come to you when, it time, when it's time to perform. Yeah. And it's yeah. always very interesting because you really don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. And it's easy to overthink it too, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot easier just to just just let it flow, just keep mm-hmm. your anchor notes and less is more, right? In a lot of cases. Well, then, you know, at the same time, you know, you're you know, while you're while your 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 ears and your skill are there are obviously amazing. I uh you know, speaking as somebody who's a you know, trumpeter or two, I would not um I, I couldn't ask for a a more reliable and s- more solid uh, section, lead, you know, principal principal uh, uh, player in the in the orchestra. Uh, Gerald, you're, I mean, you're, when you play, it's just I, you know, whatever you do, I look at you. I mean, like, what, what was what was the thing that was remarkable? I know you're just going to lay it down. What was so bad? Like, I'm trying to remember. Oh, I was, I might have been with Prokofiev or Shostakovich or something, and these these little inner parts that are just like, you know, it's it's like threading a needle on some of these things in terms of rhythm and stuff. And it's like, I know, boom, and 
and Gerald is there. So it's it's like well, I'll tell you, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, to Frank uh, Frank Arecki, who was principal before oh, yeah. I was. Frank. Yes, Frank, Frank right? So, and Frank is an outstanding player. Yeah, he's a great, yeah, to, really good player. To be able to spend a few years under, I guess, under his tutelage as an assistant, right. good. was really helpful to me in terms of the production of sound that you mm -hmm. want for the orchestra, and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, he's a fabulous player. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you player. pick up a lot just being right beside someone who is so skilled. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, that's yeah. I'd forgotten that Frank was the uh, yeah. The, uh, he principal. goes way back. Yeah. Well, um, Gerald, you're know, talking about tutelage. Our trumpet section has grown healthily over the last few years, and we have a really solid core now of four players. And that's thanks to you being there to to guide the the section. Um, when we have four trumpet parts now in our music, we're covered, and it sounds tremendous. Right. So, yeah. so thanks. Well, so much I, for I give that. a lot of credit to uh, to Claudia. She doesn't know how much of an inspiration yeah. she has been yeah. for me because she yeah. was there when I got there. Yeah, and then we're yeah. we're very fortunate to have uh, Sean along mm -hmm. and Jacob now. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I give Claudia a lot of credit because she's really been an inspiration for me and and. Uh, uh, an anchor mm -hmm. for me and I've told her so because uh, we've been there around the same amount of time her right. just a little yeah, bit longer yeah right that's, that's great that's true yeah. well um before we move into our segment I just want to point out on our screen we have a a, a web address at the bottom that is for <clears> any <throat> kind of donations that anybody feels they can do nothing is too small uh, we're, of course, all trying to regroup still, and the performing arts are certainly greatly impacted by all of the, the closures over the last several months, and um, it's going to be a slow road getting back to normal, but just know that the Frederick Symphony is committed to finding the way, finding the solutions to keep the music coming to you, whether in online or in person, or a combination of both, and we'll talk more about, about that later on tonight, tonight as well. So, um, gentlemen... Let me announce what the order is for the next three pieces, and we can talk a little bit about these pieces too. Andy, you start off this next set with a great new. Well, I guess I do. Yeah, yeah. Talk this to is us a nice. Uh, a bit. Yeah, this is a nice little. Med this is a nice little medley. I was, I was. It was fun that we, uh, we had had a chance to, um, to change things up a little bit with these holiday melodies mm -hmm. or medleys. Excuse me. This is a nice little medley called "Around the World at Christmas." Now, uh, and of, of course, it says "Around the World at Christmas." Features a Hanukkah song in it, right. but okay, right? Well, <laughs> so you know you can't have everything. Well, you know this is a tasty arrangement. It's yeah. uh, Bruce Chase's arrangement. He's taken some some uh, some off the beaten track uh, um, carols and and uh, and other songs for, for for Christmas, but literally, you know, from around well around Europe anyway. Um, and there, you'll, you'll you'll probably recognize some of them, but some of them are maybe a little less less familiar. Right. Uh, I mean, you're. I think you get your ubiquitous Silent Night. There, you can. If you don't have Silent Night, it's not a Christmas party. So, but um, what is it? But the, uh, Chase has created a very very attractive, uh, beautifully orchestrated, uh, just and and the sign of a good medley is when when you know the. It, what song not just what songs are kind of included in it but how how the uh how you transition from one to the next how they link together and you know you can hear some that are pretty you know why, why, why would you do that but this is all just very tasty and nicely done and so i think yeah you'll enjoy it it's a it's a it's not a, a thing that you hear very often so yeah, yeah. and a lot of old world carols in that yeah a lot That's of old world yeah. yeah 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 very exactly nice. Uh, the um, second piece is this very tasty arrangement of the Christmas song, Mel Torme, again featuring Gerald on trumpet, and just some fantastic, uh, this is lush beautiful, string writing. Beautiful arrangement. Just great. And I think, I think the Frederick strings have really taken to this kind of uh, piece where it's, it's more, I guess, back in the dance band era, the harmony back then, very tight voicings. Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful arrangement. And then, the final cut in this segment is, of course, the famous Diamond commercial music, the uh, Palladio by Carl Jenkins. And if nothing else, that one movement is forever immortalized during the holiday season for shopping for diamonds. And yep. uh, it's just, it's great music. You'll recognize it. <laughs> Very interesting. Carl Jenkins is a great composer. He has so much great music I would love for us to, to explore a little bit more of. Um, and then when we're finished with that, we'll come back 
We'll be joined by Alyssa Boxhill. And um, before we do that, gentlemen, quickly, what were some of the, any of the holidays, any holiday, what is some, just name one tune that really is dear to your heart. Start I, with, I grew up on, yeah, on the, on, on the um, Johnny Mathis oh, yeah. uh, stuff. My yeah. dad used to play uh, Johnny Mathis album and the Nat King Cole album mm-hmm. so much that I learned the, the sequence of all of the songs one after the right. other. Uh, but Chestnuts Roasting on the Open Fire with the, oh, yeah. the Nat King Cole. Oh, so gosh, yes. Nat King. And those are two of the most beautiful voices yeah. in the business. Oh my gosh, yeah, just incredible singers. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Bob? Uh, for me, it's got to be Home for Christmas. Okay. Um, and and also Home for the Holidays, but Home for Christmas, yeah. the Bing Crosby recording. Oh yeah. It's also right in my range, so I can sing along. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, cool. and uh, I lo- all, have always loved that song. And we have some of our our viewers are mentioning things now too. Um, Stephen Pestina mentioned Mannheim Steamroller, oh, yeah. which we've oh, actually yeah. done on one of our concerts. Yes, some of that. Uh, oh. We have, uh, of course, uh, Dory Miles says Sleigh Ride for live orchestra is always her favorite, <laughs> um, which is always fun to play. Um, and um, also, uh, you know, Michael Hill is saying the Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra era recordings yeah. for christmas and to me those are those are the classic ones They're the ones right. i grew up on and 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 um uh um you know johnny mathis who we've mentioned already yeah. and um what about uh, andy williams yeah. anybody andy williams yeah andy, andy williams, williams, williams of course, yeah. sure <laughs> yep yep oh gosh the albums yeah. albums that played in the holidays it was the there was like a set of them and mm-hmm. i swear every note is up here you know, and then the, the, the instrumental was the Boston Pops. Yes, of course. Same here. Right. What about you, Andy? Well, uh, in spite of what I, I did, there's I did not grow up on hearing any really good uh, alternate ho- uh, holiday music uh, like like Hanukkah songs. Right. Stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, what would be but, uh, what would but be, just, let's say some of the, the like the crooners from back in the day? What well, would, yeah, exactly. I mean, I I I I I um always think of Perry Como, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. I, I know that that there's a voice that if I associate with winter time and sort of winter, right. you know, there's, I don't know why there's a, right. uh, but uh, in those, those uh, are, you know, watching TV on those back as a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, and God, God, are we dating? And so they're those Christmas variety shows. Right. And, you know, it was always, you know, and, and Perry Como always sticks in my mind. Again, what a voice and what a, you know, just a, fantastic you know that's that satiny voice and, yes. and what a and yes. stage presence but uh yeah um so i think about a lot of a lot of those old sort of uh, right those 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 old uh uh um right those crooner voices just for sure right. Right. yeah well again this is this is a just a we're trying to give everyone a heads up that this is a great time to start your holiday shopping <laughs> we are we have an a robust online delivery world now that seems to have caught up with itself and you can go out into some of the stores now and venture out if you feel comfortable doing that and i bet the i bet the prices are going to be good for a while because of the fact that nobody's been yeah. apart. so right don't don't slack and get out there and start your holiday shopping now or and- <laughs> give a good christmas present to the frederick symphony orchestra an early christmas yes. present to frederick symphony yes. orchestra at Frederick Symphony Orchestra dot org backslash support. Yes. How was that, guys? Oh, that was pretty that slick, be, wasn't it? That was pretty slick. Much appreciated, cool. of course. And cool. um, we'll eventually start to be able to do donations here, right on YouTube and uh, Facebook eventually. But for now, <clears throat> we're uh, we're just we're using our link that's on our page. Um, well, gentlemen, I want to thank everybody for coming on and welp- welcoming us back to this series. Um, so we'll play these next three tracks back to back. And when we come back, we'll have Alyssa Boxo with us and we'll be focusing in on three numbers that featured our great friend, Emily Casey with the orchestra. And, um, so with that, we will move right into now Chris, Christmas around the world at Christmas time featuring Andrew Rosenfeld and the Frederick Symphony Orchestra. And Gerald, thank you for joining us, man. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Nice look. I like the look. Yeah, we're getting there. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, everybody. Bob, we'll see you back here in a little while. And uh, folks, please enjoy.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is now a bigger Brady Bunch. We decided to keep our guests on. We are now joined by our concert master, Alyssa Boxo. Alyssa, welcome. How are you tonight? I'm doing well, thank doing you. Doing all right? How are you guys? Fantastic, fantastic. So, Alyssa, um, you got to hear a little bit of the first part of this piece, and you know, we kind of did um, more, I guess, not pop, type music but a little more popular numbers and now we're getting ready to shift into some more serious stuff with a soloist right and we were talking on this little break here you and I have a very unique role with um, how we navigate through a piece with a guest soloist and let's talk a little bit about what that's like for us because we you know people don't know what's happening up there without speaking we have so many things that we have to manage and we kind of split the difference between the soloist and the orchestra, right? So mm -hmm. first of all, welcome. How are you doing? Hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been back out on your bike a lot lately? Trying to here and there. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Not enough. Never enough. But, no, it uh, never is. More enough. than I was a month ago. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, Alyssa, talk to us about now our soloist that we have coming up in the next th uh, three numbers is Emily Casey, and we've done a lot of performances with her. So mm -hmm. what's it like for you where you're sitting when we have to do a, a performance like this? Getting a soloist to play with us is, is, is always kind of a delicate dance, like you were saying. Yeah. Um, there's so much that, that relies on body language mm -hmm. and, and, and unspoken communication and, and sort of unconscious communication. Right. Um, the advantage that we have, that I have personally, and that you have, of course, is our proximity to yeah. the soloist. So when we are that close, we can, can read the inflections, we can read the body language, especially with singers. In Emily's case, um, they breathe naturally before they start singing. So even if they're not conscious of cueing us, 
that breath, that whole body movement of actually inhaling before they starting, they start singing, yeah. um, is kind of critical for us to follow. Absolutely. So it's, it's very helpful. I think the, the only major challenge is, uh, you know, where, where stage space is concerned, kind oh, yeah. of finding that sweet spot of you being able to see the soloist um, and then the rest of us being able to see you. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the soloist will be kind of positioned between us and you. Um, when we have more space, obviously, it's a little bit easier. But again, that proximity is really important. And I think that um, that it helps to to have someone who who has worked with us before, obviously, right. or worked with you before, because that makes you more familiar with, with their idiosyncrasies and their quirks right. and, and kind of what they do naturally, even without realizing. Um, but but the beauty of, of working with you as a soloist, speaking from firsthand experience, is that that you just you just you know follow so naturally and you lead so naturally in that in that unspoken dance, mm -hmm. and it makes everything a lot easier. Um, right both for the soloist and then also I think for the ensemble. Yeah. It's a very, it's, it's kind of a very beautiful um, relationship that goes on. And, you know, and it's you very say it's beautiful. Part of. I agree. <laughs> it's beautiful. And at the same time, it's harrowing. At times. It's harrowing. It Absolutely. Oh yeah. 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 It can be tough. Yeah. It can yeah. be so depending scary. On the, yeah. Depending on the piece, depending on the soloist in right. some cases, depending on, um, there are a lot of factors, but, um, but, 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 but we make it work. And of course I think that, that if we had the opportunity to have more rehearsal time with the soloists sure. in some cases, especially with, with newer soloists that we're not um, familiar with working uh, with in the past, that would be helpful. But of course it's, you know, it's challenging to work people's schedules and work, mm -hmm. work time on stage, et cetera. Right. Um, but again, it, it, it always seems to work out. I yeah, mean, we always sort of come together, it gels um, and you kind of do have to rely on instinct a lot yes. of the time. And that's where that that kind of unconscious, yeah. um, unspoken body language familiarity comes into play. Well, I, you know, I, I, the the relationship to the to the to the concertmaster, the principal, the principal, first principal violinist, and the conductor is people. I think it's you're getting it. It's, it people, audience don't don't quite understand how much we we rely, we depend on you. Oh, absolutely. Um, we, we depend on you. Uh, and, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting in the rehearsal process, uh, you, the, the conductor is going to have a kind of a broad vision, the view from 35,000 feet, whatever. And, and, and obviously you have to get into detail. Um, but unless that, unless that conductor really, really knows, knows the lingo for particular instruments, like, you know, I, you know, the, the violins, you know, we need, to, need something with communicated violins. I'm going to go directly to you, right? Um, you know, I'm not, I, you're right, and say this is what we want. Now you pass. You you tell them how to do it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's, an, also, it's an interpretation. also interpretation, yeah. also just communicating the technique, yeah. the technique, but also when when the music making is actually happening too. How much you know uh, visually, there you're you're an intermediary often. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully we we're in sync. <laughs> oh yeah. But then usually you are, but but you're an intermediary. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a really special relationship. I, I mm -hmm. was about. Absolutely. And, you know, I'll be honest. I think, yeah, Andy, I have a good one. So, yeah. Andy, we probably both been in the situation where, <clears throat> especially with a soloist, we rely on our concert masters so much to yeah. the point where if I'm trying to give a cue and the concert master knows that it's early, they'll hold out on me and wait right. and be with that solo well, and at that moment i kind of back off and it's split second and i go oh mm -hmm. she's with that i'm gonna wait thank you Alyssa. there well, was had a great yeah yeah well almost, that never happens to me happened. i don't know does that happens to you glenn yeah. that's never <laughs> happened to me it I, does I don't know. honestly and <laughs> are well, you kidding but that's a, but that's the that's yeah. the beauty of the role uh, the relationship between a conductor and the concert master yeah. is we know we can trust like we can trust you Alyssa to do oh, yeah. that and to and and your section and your strings are going to trust you too probably before they trust me and that's a good thing <laughs> that's a good thing but it really that's, is yeah, but in that split that's, second yeah. moment um because you really are closer to the soloist most of the time than i am so your mm -hmm. visual and and listening is so keyed into them mm -hmm. and so we really we really do appreciate it and i don't think people understand that yeah. aren't musicians in an orchestra just how important that role is it's without a concert master you're dead in the water with an orchestra a strong you concert cannot master. do it it's it's just a bunch of 
blind leading the blind really you know yeah. it's it's it that needs the central force and it needs the visual and, too when Alyssa plays she yeah. dictates when right. she's coming in when she's lifting when she's everything is all there and they they know to look up to her for that and it's great we really appreciate it Alyssa big time you ain't bad at it Alyssa you ain't bad at it <laughs> thank you <laughs> and you know um, Alyssa we've been talking about for some time about <clears throat> one of our upcoming episodes we're really trying to make this happen it's a matter of getting our hands on footage um, mm -hmm. a soloist episode where we have a lot of of pieces that feature you and we've got a number of pieces we have the Corelli we have um, the two, the Vivaldi double concerto we have Paulella playing Sweet Antique by Rudder we, got some that, we have uh, Vistu like, by Mare with by Mare, Bob right? and Alyssa and we want to just make a, a full episode of those things that's coming very soon um, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to get into that because it's such a great colorful collection of our great oh, yeah. players in the orchestra being featured as soloists and yeah. I love featuring you guys in the orchestra. I love bringing in outside soloists, but I really, really enjoy it when you all get to come out front and do things. It's 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 special for me because I want people mm -hmm. to know how good you are, and you're right here in, the, in right in the orchestra. We don't have to bring in all the time outside people to prove that. So it's really, really great. So Gerald, those solos in that um, chestnuts were beautiful. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. So now the next couple pieces here, I believe, I'm not sure. I think you're on Oh Holy Night being, yeah. that's um, the only one that he might be on coming up. Uh -huh. And again, that's a modern arrangement of Oh Holy Night that um, was new this or new last year. We had not done before. Was that this year? I can't recall. It was two years yeah, ago. Two years ago. Thank you. Two years, yeah. But um, it's 18. one of our new upgraded pieces that uh, we added to our holiday show. Um, so the pieces that we have on this next segment is are, are an incredible rendition of Ave Maria, which actually features Alyssa once again in an extended first verse. You play mm -hmm. the entire piece as solo mm -hmm. violin before Emily comes in. It's a beautiful arrangement. Um, I've, I've yep. done this one elsewhere, and it's. I love to come back to this arrangement. Um, and then also, Andy, we've got you coming back to do yeah. the Mozart Vespers. I thought, um, you know, the the Laudate Dominum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the piece that made me fall in love with Mozart's music, to be oh, honest yeah. with you. I mean, I'd always kind of admired, you know, I mean, grad, undergraduate and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I... I loved Mozart, but it really wasn't until I'd heard this particular piece that I just, that, that this piece really just kind of floored me. Um, this is a, this is a, one of the Psalms from, from his uh, Vespers, uh, the uh, Psalm Vesper, the Confessor. Um, it's, it's, it's a piece for, cor for chorus and, and orchestra and this one solo movement. And the text is Laudate Dominum, you know, praise the Lord. Now you think it would be, it, it would be, uh, you know, jumping up and down with, with, you know, trumpets and 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 timpani and tambourines and castanets and all this stuff. But no, uh, but um, um, uh, it, Mozart takes a completely different tack on it. It's 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 serene, it's angelic, and and it's just it's it's just gut wrenchingly beautiful. So I was very very privileged to be able to. To be able to conduct it and have a, a soloist like like Emily yeah. singing it, yeah. she's just marvelous. Now you're so, mentioning yeah. castanets with Mozart. Wasn't he working on a, Mo a uh, castanet concerto when he passed away? Probably, yeah, probably, yes. Yeah. So it was in his uh, it, it was in his uh, Spanish Spain, phase, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think he um, I think he he was gonna yeah. He, he fortunately he, he would he would have had to been 36 when he when he when it came out and he he kicked it when he was 35. So no, oh yeah. well, well. <laughs> That's no, but it, it is a beautiful piece. Uh, then great the piece. last beautiful. one in this segment is again the uh, the reworked version of Oh Holy Night, and this that version was actually um, originally for tenor and orchestra, oh, yeah. but the key that it was in worked out, and when we talked with Emily, she yeah. was game, and we did it with her, and it sounded yeah. just <laughs> tremendous. It was fantastic. And this version pulls all the stops. It I mean, really this, this this piece. It really does. So, yeah. Bob, I, I'm looking at our chat. It's looking pretty healthy. We actually have got people to switched over a little bit to YouTube. I know, folks, we had a little glitch with our link to this stream. Um, it's the first time that we've done the YouTube stream. So the goal is to be able to stream to both Facebook and YouTube simultaneously, and we will make that happen for hopefully for our yep. next broadcast. So anything 
that you were used to in Facebook will be back on Facebook and anything that you like in YouTube will be there so we can reach more people. You can and reach them both places. One yeah. of the nice things about YouTube is, first of all, it's really made for this kind of a thing. They, they pretty much wrote the book on this. And um, the other thing is, is that we can offer subscribers uh, the opportunity to, to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Frederick Symphony. So if you're new tonight, please subscribe to our channel and anytime that we have anything coming up, you'll get notifications and um, share it with people that you know that are that are on YouTube as well. Uh, I think we have a chance of reaching a far larger larger audience with YouTube than Facebook because um, I think more people are actually on YouTube. Than and we're going to actively populate the, fa the uh, YouTube uh, page with a lot more with a lot more rep too. Yes, we are. So, Bob, what do we got on this 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 flow chart here? I'm, I see a lot of great comments. Yep. Um, you know, everyone, as usual, is really enjoying it. Um, lots of compliments on Gerald's solo and uh, lots of compliments from our string section on how wonderful this is. And, um, you know, the one thing that's a little, I will say, a little difference here, you know, I can't do just on specific comments, I can't do little emoticon reaction right. like i can on right. facebook and that yeah. you know, I, I, so sorry folks I, I can't give you the love <laughs> <laughs> um but um <clears throat> but people are definitely um definitely commenting and we have our Excellent. our uh, watchers count is up in a nice space right now so right. looks like everyone's enjoying the broadcast but again folks questions if you have a question for Alyssa or one of the conductors or Gerald or me or please. just a general question about the music, um, please ask away. Yeah, yeah, great. So, Alyssa, we asked everybody what was one of their favorite holiday t holiday tunes or what, what did you hear maybe in the house growing up? Uh, anything that comes to mind? Maybe it doesn't so, have to be just one. There was, there was this uh, legendary record that got passed down uh, from my dad's family. He had it. Uh, uh, I think when they were kids mm -hmm. and, um, it was, uh, I want to say 40 French girls, Le Gin singers. I think they were, um, Canadian. Mm -hmm. And so this, uh, this, this record, he used to listen to it. He, he used to play it all the time around the, around the holidays when, when I was growing up. And so these, this, this choir of French, French women, beautiful voices singing, singing choir, uh, singing, um, carols in French. And um, at some point, the record got lost, oh. and uh, we we you know lost track of it. He didn't know whether one of his sisters, one of my aunts, took it or not. Um, so I actually put a, um, a flag on it on Amazon. Um, I looked it up; it was unavailable, unavailable. And then one day, right around November of last year, oh, it became available. Somebody in Pennsylvania was was selling a used copy in good condition. Wow. So I was wow. actually able to buy it and uh, give it to my dad for Christmas. That's great. So that was really special. Yay! Fantastic. Yeah, it's great that you found that. Yeah. You know, another there's another really good source for that kind of stuff, particularly old out of print vinyl, uh, is Discogs. Oh, okay. sure. Yeah, I I found believe it or not a recording of Vivaldi's Four Seasons being played on Kotos on Discogs <laughs> that I was wow. looking for desperately. <laughs> wow. Yes, that's great. It's awesome. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You know, speaking of um, old albums, um, you remember our holiday swing concert that we did a couple of years ago, right? Oh yeah. That the story behind that is when um, my wife and I lived in Florida when we first got married. We discovered this big band Christmas CD at Barnes and Nobles or something. Brought it home and fell in love with it, and it became a staple for us forever. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess about seven, eight years ago. We, it was the holidays, and I pulled it back out, and I was like, I, I bet I could get my hands on these charts. So I did a little bit of research, and lo and behold, I found the guy who did the charts and the recording, Pete Jacobs. He's out in L.A., and I, I got in touch with him, and I told him that I wanted to do his charts, but I wanted to add strings. And he was so generous. He, he said, no problem. He sent me the, the music XML files. And I was really? able to pull them into Sibelius and craft string parts out of them. And that's what we nice. ended up using for our show. So wow. that was a great, one of those stories where the CD was in our, our playlist for so long and we loved it, knew, knew all of the numbers. And 
finally I just said, I've got to get my hands on these charts. And we did. So it's really fun when you can pull back something into your playlist that is so dear to you, you know. I never thought that I could actually get the music from from Pete Jacobs, but it happened. And he was, again, just he couldn't have been more kind and more generous with helping us achieve that, which was really cool. And that's what it's all about with music, you know. It was very, very nice. So, But anyway, so are there any final words that anybody has before we go into our next segment? And we are going to come back one more time after the three numbers with Emily. And um, we have one more piece, nice, fun, closing piece after that. Um, we'll talk about when we come back. Anything else anybody you'd like to say before we go into no, the segment? I, it's... Just buckle up. This is a uh, you, you get get ready. Uh, you're 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 gonna sort of get you're gonna go you're gonna go to the North Pole on gossamer wings in this next yeah. set. So get ready for it. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks again, everybody. And um, this is the great Emily Casey joining the Frederick Symphony Orchestra, and uh, starting off first with Ave Maria featuring Alyssa Boxhill as well, followed then by Andy conducting Laudate Dominum from the Mozart Vespers, and then finally, Oh Holy Night, a wonderful new arrangement featuring Emily. And when we finish Oh Holy Night, we will come back one more time for our conclusion. So with that, folks, please sit back, enjoy Emily Casey and the Frederick Symphony Orchestra. Yeah.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Boy, that was really breathtaking. The amazing Emily Woo! Casey with the Frederick Symphony Orchestra. Boy, there's some beautiful, beautiful music in that last segment there, huh, guys? Mm-mm-mm. Just wow. great, great uh, <laughs> listening and and the the Ave Maria with Alyssa and the solos together and just yeah. really great showcase of what this orchestra can do. And um, for sure, very for proud sure. of that performance for sure. Um, the uh, the the thing that you talked about, Andy, you said that that Mozart was what got you into. Yeah, that's that. This. That was the piece that made me fall in love with his music. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, and I see why. You were we were talking on the break. It's so transparent, and to keep the pulse and the accompaniment going in that space of Kaufman yeah. is very. Remember we were talking. Time. Yeah, remember we were talking about trusting Alyssa. Yes, helping. Uh, people understand that 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 piece, you know, what you hear on a piece like that is the aggregate of all the parts coming together. You know, so right. from the audience, right. from the audience perspective, all you're hearing is saying it comes da 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 right. But what's really happening is that on one part is sort of thumping away on the downbeat, boom, and then you got the second violins coming on the upbeat with da 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 da, and and then of course there's the there's the melody that goes on with that. Just great. That's track. incredibly difficult, really difficult to, to hold together. And when you hear it yeah, all together, it yeah. sounds like one person just playing it on a keyboard, basically. It sounds like one person yeah. playing it, exactly. And, it, and, uh, and I all, all credit to, the, to this orchestra for, for keeping it, and in a very live acoustic, oh, yeah. uh, where, where there's even a little bit of a delay right. uh, yeah. in, that, in that space. Yeah. To, to be able to, to be that tight on that piece was, mm-hmm. was that's, that's some darn good playing, great folks. Stuff. Well, we want to, of course, thank our great performance partner and colleague, Wayne Wold, and yes, his hospitality Wayne. at Kaufman Chapel once again. Um, mm-hmm. It's just such a beautiful venue for the orchestra, and, you know, the proof is in the recordings. The acoustics in there are just second to none, and we have, of course, Wayne on the organ on many features as well, and harpsichord in this concert. We'll bring that, we'll bring that segment back in another episode with Wayne joining yeah. us uh, on Harvest. This is episode one. <laughs> this is episode one. We have so much holiday music, of course. But uh, yeah, so, and we also want to thank Jeffrey Baker for his great footage of the audio yeah. and the video. Um, we have such a beautiful product, thanks to Jeffrey. And, um, you know, we're, as as we mentioned earlier, this is the first time we've done the YouTube broadcast, so we're, we're finding our way. We're, yeah. uh, we're, we're confident we can get both platforms together uh, going forward. And um, so if you prefer Facebook and, and to be able to, to interact that way, it should be possible. And the same with YouTube as well. So <clears throat> from what I'm hearing, yeah. what I'm hearing through my headphones or listening and from the comments and the feedback we're getting, uh, it shouldn't surprise us. You, uh, the the, the uh, YouTube is the, this this platform is is much is, is serving this purpose much yeah. better. I mean, yeah, with all due respect to you, Facebook, I don't want to get, right. you know. Don't get a bad size. Let's say, all right. But I mean, clearly, this is this is yeah. Uh, but this is really uh, the way to go. And I hopefully, you know, but please feedback on. Give us some feedback. Yes, please. This. We got. Well, we, we did get we'll positive feedback that there was less compression in the sound, which is really mm-hmm. good for us. And I have yeah. to say, the phone audio quality tonight has been really exceptional. Yeah. With yeah. you all on the call, it's been yeah. no noise, no jumping in and out, and you know we're using a different platform this time, and it seems to be working mm-hmm. great. Yeah. So, very yeah, so uh, Gerald, Zoom. question for you. The next piece that we have, we have one more fun, fun piece to end the night with. It's the concert suite from Polar Express. Oh, and boy. That has just great brass writing in it. Great. Just it's it's a it's just a classic, great Hollywood score. Right. It sounds it. Yeah, it really is very exposed. So you have to uh, be on your game. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Rhythmically, everything. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But you all sounded great in this in this uh, performance of this piece, and it's one of our newer ones that we had pulled in uh, in this last couple of years. Um, and I know that as we get into more series uh, broadcasts, we'll definitely play around with doing some segments from the Holiday Swing stuff and maybe some of the Mannheim Steamroller that we did oh, so years ago. The Ellington thing, get some of the and Ellington. Duke Ellington, Nutcracker. of course, the De- Ellington Nutcracker. We've got a lot more. Oh. A lot more holiday stuff in store for future episodes. We have no shortage of that. Harold, <clears throat> well, a, a lot of practice time went into yeah. that. Yes, it did. That was <laughs> great fun, though, wasn't it? That was like the combination, yeah. the ultimate combination of an orchestra and a jazz group with Absolutely. classical pieces that have been re- rewritten for uh, 
a jazz, like a, a big band, so to speak. Yeah. And really and, great fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun. A lot of fun. A yeah, lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, good question for you, because again, is this is sort of a, you know, because we keep talking about, um, you know, we, we keep talking about the relationship of listening and people working. You know, when we're in a space as big as Kaufman, though, with a live acoustic, what kind of, and, and this is in case people aren't aware of this, you're back, you're in the, uh, you're, w- w- it feels like a football field away uh, mm-hmm. from you. Uh, when, um, what are what are some of the, do you have some specific challenges uh, to performing in a space in a space like this? You know, every space is different, and uh, it requires you to use your ear. I've been in some venues where you really could not hear a thing, mm-hmm. and that's where you do rely on the conductor. You rely on the um, the concert master, concert mistress to to really help to lead the way because there are times where you feel like you're flying not blind but deaf Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you're doing the best that you can to sort of it it really emphasizes the importance of listening Mm -hmm. and that's where because we practice so often you kind of get a feel for where things are and even if you do have some challenges in some of the halls like coffin can be a challenge back there in the back um because we work so well together and have practiced the pieces throughout our rehearsal periods it, it really helps to know where you are even with those um those audio sort of challenges that exist in the in the various halls that we play in so mm-hmm. listening is really key yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. you know listening. we rehearse in a in a rehearsal room at frederick community college that has a low ceiling and it's very dry so you hear you hear everything yeah and for better or for worse actually it's really hard to get a blend <laughs> in that space or to, to have dynamics because mm-hmm. the the volume level is pretty much the same in the room. All it the makes time. you honest. It makes it the makes orchestra honest. honest. It does. <laughs> but then we get into Kaufman, which has, you know, 10 times the height of the ceiling, probably, or five times the height of the ceiling. And it's just a giant open space with a live acoustic. And we really have to almost relearn how to play together in a space like that, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and just stay alert, stay alert to what's going on and yeah. and reading and reacting to how everyone is performing. Right. But that's the neat part, of, at least what I've seen with my experience with FSO is that at concert time, we do a really great job of sort of blending well and listening to each other mm-hmm. and adjusting to those changes because we yeah. only get maybe a couple of rehearsals and right. we seem to do quite an excellent job of making those adjustments. Absolutely. I agree with you. Yeah. I that's, agree. That's a challenge of a large ensemble, right? Right. You have to... Really special, a special, special group. The more that we play in multiple venues as an ensemble, the better we will get at making those adjustments quickly and knowing what to look for and what to listen for. I think we, when we rehearse for Kaufman while we're at FCC, we always talk about Okay, remember, when we get into that space, those articulations have to be super crisp because otherwise it all just kind of runs together, right? It'll turn into a wash. Yeah, yeah, so it's a good exercise. Did we want to say anything about, uh, I mean, we're we're still, it's a shifting landscape for the fall, but Mm -hmm. we are going to be, we are going to be doing something, uh, you know, as as the state and as, uh, you know, whatever uh, allows us to, uh, we, um, our season uh, next, next, well, whatever, starting the fall, we uh, will be, will consist of, uh, it's going to be smaller scale, right? You're thinking uh, a lot of string heavy material and, yeah. uh, and uh, but we're going to be making music yeah. and we're going to also be offering, we're looking into, uh, you know, offering some online, right? Uh, right. Some, some streaming options yes. to view as well as yeah. live. So yeah, the goal don't, is don't... to pull together <clears throat> Starting with just, this is probably going to be up through December, whichever performances we have. Um, smaller strings groups together for those concerts. We'll be reprogramming a lot of what we had originally planned on doing because of just the size restrictions. But at the same time, what we're going to be doing is offering tickets for the live event for those people that can come out. And obviously it will be a smaller capacity. Um, but we're also going to be offering private uh, event tickets online for people to watch us perform it live, and we will be streaming the performances actually live as well. So if you don't come in person, you'll have the option to get an, an online ticket us. and watch it in the comfort of your home and not worry about having to come outdoors. So stay tuned for all of that. We're very excited about how we're going to launch that platform 
and again it's still a work in progress so oh yeah we'll get it yep. right we have a little bit of time luckily but um we're we're, we're definitely going to be again as we said earlier we are podcast, not down or out though no way we're bringing the music to you and uh it will continue so we're very excited about that so bob what are we looking at here i see a lot of new comments here yeah, um, a lot of it commenting on what we we're talking about changing venues, a lot of our musicians talking about different venues that we've played in and that were harder or or easier to play in. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people once again, thanking us for doing these and keeping the continuity going by having these, um, these live broadcasts or live streams um and compliments of course on on the soloists in the central section on uh you know Alyssa and wayne and casey yeah. um or emily rather um all um are the, that's the general gist of all the comments right. no questions okay come on guys <laughs> um it's hard <laughs> but um but that is the general general gist of things on Fantastic. comments and, and it's always great to see the comments it is it really is and um you know we want to hear from it from you all as much as possible um please share this youtube channel with your friends and subscribe so that we can keep you up to date on our next shows that come up um again we're very excited to be able to try to launch both platforms next week fingers crossed and uh should be should be really really great make so, it work yeah good um so with that gentlemen i think we'll move into our final piece this is the uh this is a, arranged by alvin silvestri i believe yeah and that. um a great concert suite from the ever popular polar express <laughs> i'm sure you'll recognize every single melody in this great rendition very spirited arrangement and um we are very happy that you joined us tonight for Christmas in summer. Please get out and start your shopping early so they can restock so people like me have time to get it when it's right before Christmas. That's right. <laughs> and don't forget fredericksymphony.org backslash support. Yes, yes. Anything anything you can do would be greatly appreciated always. So, Gentlemen, thanks again. Everybody, Thank thanks, well, for thanks for tuning for in. Yeah. And fun. we will see you back here on Thursday of next week. With that, happy holidays in June, and <laughs> <laughs> enjoy the Frederick Symphony Orchestra performing Polar Express Suite. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. See you Bye. soon. Here we go.